And this is Ken Kratzer for Cam Vets Media. We cover cadets, midshipmen, the military, and veterans, and Iona University basketball. And we are very glad to have with us tonight uh, Kevin Hamilton, Iona class of 1980, and a basketball Hall of Famer for the Gales. Kevin, how are you tonight? Very good, Ken. Good to see you. Well, the Gales uh, started their three-game uh, tournament at the Diamond Head Classic in Hawaii, but got off to uh, a disappointing start. They were kind of cruising along in this game. Uh, they were ahead at the half, and they had a 10-point lead with a, just over 10 minutes to go to the game. And then something happened, and uh, uh, they were outscored 31-15 to 15 from that point on um, by the SMU Mustangs. So, what was your observation of what happened at that point in the game? Well, prior to getting to that point of the game, I thought um, Iona was doing a very good job um, after taking an early lead with with playing um, consistent, sharing the ball. Um, Nelly Jr. Josephs, again, got off to a good start. Um, and certainly the guards, both uh, Walter Clayton and uh uh, Jenkins performed very, very well early. But I thought there were some signs that was a little concerning um, when you go into halftime and your two guards um, pretty much do all your scoring. Um, certainly, you know, uh, there was going to be some changes made by the opposition, and you had to be a little concerned about that. Um with a big lead, I thought Iona, you know, did a good job, but um, started missing shots that they were making early. I think in the first half, they shot over 65% from three, um, which was really great for them. But in the second half, that, that number was almost reversed. So that became a little bit concerning. Um, overall, I just think in this particular game, um, the second half adjustments um, by SMU really took effect. They started scoring um, a little bit uh, more the way Iona scores with a little bit of pressure and pushing the tempo, forcing the tempo a little bit. Um, SMU's guards performed very well in the second half. Um, one of the differences was when they broke the Iona press, which they, which they at times struggled a little bit with, but when they broke the press in the second half, they were going to score versus pulling the ball out and trying to run something. And I think that was a, a big difference in the game for SMU to, to come back and, and capture victory against Iona. Well, certainly uh, Iona got a lot of points early in the first half. I had it that uh, uh, Dennis Jenkins had, and Clay and Walter Clayton together at 32 points in the first half. And uh, Clayton finished with 22 and Jenkins uh, with 18. Nellie Jr. Joseph, another strong game with 20. Uh, but uh, disappointing, Barack, uh, Barrack John Louis uh, did not score. He only played seven minutes. And Quinn Zelensky, who's back in his second game after missing better part of a month uh, with, a, with an injury, had eight. Um, and... Uh, so, uh, as you said, uh, Kevin, Iona sh uh, shot 48% on the day, uh, but uh, uh, SMU uh, shot very well, 60% uh, on the day. Uh, very strong uh, performance. Uh, so, um, was this at all, um, you know, just uh, tired legs by Iona having played uh, a few days before in New Mexico on the travel? that uh, gave uh, that SMU just uh, was able to uh, play a last, a very strong last 10 minutes. You know, it's, it's tough to say. Um, however, I, I would say as a, as a player, you wouldn't want to use that as an excuse. You, you, you know, travels travel, you ended up there, you had a chance to, to rest and to, to practice and get your legs underneath you. You had a chance to, to do some other, uh, very nice things, visiting Pearl Harbor and, and stuff like that. But once the game starts, there's really no no excuse, you know, especially how well they played early. I, I would say if they would have got off to a tough start 
and and maintain that tough playing throughout the rest of the contest then maybe. But they played very well early. Um, so I, I would say that, you know, the the tired legs in the second half, you know, you, you suck it up and, and you, you do what you have to do to win. The other yeah. thing, the other thing with that, Ken, is um, Iona's playing more players, which, you know, their starters for the most part, although the bulk of their starters played, you know, 29 plus minutes, each of them, I believe. Um, there's there's a chance for them to get the kind of breaks that they that they want to get and that they need. So um, I just think it was a matter of them going cold. It was a, a stretch where for over five minutes, I only didn't score a, a bucket in the second half. And no matter who you're playing against, that creates a little bit of a problem when you can't score when you're used to scoring in bunches. Yeah, uh, SMU went on a run uh, uh, of about 11 points uh, to, to give uh, to uh, get back within one and uh, then uh, continue to. Sometimes a team, you see, they'll go on a run, but then they'll lose it after that, having expended a lot of injuries. Uh, yeah, I only went 11, 11 deep today uh, with uh, Cruz Davis getting 16 minutes off the bench and uh, Parker Weiss getting 25 minutes today, uh, three points. Uh, Cruz Davis had, had six points on the day. Um, but uh, Ashima has been playing very well. Uh, just eight minutes, two rebounds, and two points. Was there any kind of a change in defense uh, that uh, that you saw uh, on the part of um, SMU that made it uh, made it difficult for Iona? Well, SMU, um, the, some of the big difference in the second half, from my perspective, was they limited to Iona to one shot. I, Iona typically chases the ball very well, and Coach Patino, I know is a stickler for that. When a shot goes up, go get it. Um, but they were limited to one shot for the most part. Um, you know, when when you are forced to, you know, take a lot of threes, you're living and dying with the three. So when threes weren't being made and Iona had to try to get to the basket, I thought SMU did a better job cutting off the lanes to the basket. Um, so those things matter. And then... You know, one of the, the, the biggest differences, you know, remember when you play defense, once you get the rebound, what? You're in offense. You know, SMU did a, a better job in the second half converting from defense to offense and pushing the ball up the floor and getting easier shots than they got in the first half, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. And again, I own shot 48% on the day. SMU, uh, remarkable, 60%, uh, 33 of 55 and uh, they were 6 of 13, 46% on three. Iona was 13 of 22. Um, but um, uh, also turnovers, Iona had 18 and SMU had 21, something Coach Patino talks about quite a bit now. Uh, Iona will now play tomorrow against uh, Seattle, the Red Hawks, a uh, team maybe we don't hear as much about. Uh, that game, I have it as uh, 11.30 Honolulu time. So I guess that would be 4.30 New York time, but for our five hours difference uh, seems uh, to be yeah. the case. Yeah, 3.30, 4.30, something like that, yep. Okay, so I think it looks like we got a 4.30 start. Uh, Iona and Seattle. Seattle was defeated by... Utah State by, I don't have the score in front of me, but I believe it was 30 points. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, what do you think about the matchup with uh, Seattle? Is there any familiarity? Well, although Utah State, which which is considered a, a more than decent team uh, na nationally, um beat Seattle pretty pretty easily. When I stopped watching the game, it was about a 20-point delta. Yeah. Um, it was 84-56. Yeah. But if you look at the first half, Seattle played them very tough. Um, it was a back-and-forth game, and Seattle did a, a real decent job, particularly offensively with some talented players. Seattle's big man in the middle of the floor is, is pretty good. Um, 
And then, like all teams I own is going up against, there are more than capable guards they're playing against. Um, I would say Iona should be able to handle Seattle, um, especially with pressure. You know, I'd like to see Iona get back to, you know, being that consistent pressure team. Um, I know coaches experimenting with, uh, you know, different defenses, matchup zones, trapping out of zones, um, starting in man and ending up in, in a matchup zone. He's doing all the, the things that has made him – successful over the years and you know he knows his his talent better than anyone else um i think his players uh, you know got very comfortable playing that pressure type of game and and having the ability to be freewheeling offensively and uh you know maybe that's an opportunity to go back to doing that a little bit the personnel is a little bit different though you know you now have quinn back in the starting lineup and, and you have the other young man, the big young man um, playing. So minutes right now for all players are a premium. So they're going to have to do something to stay on the floor. Um, something that pleases the coaching staff to stay on the floor because minutes, you know, are going to be tough to get when, when they're chasing that, that uh, victory and trying to find the right five guys to keep the kind of flow that they want to have. Sure. Just looking at Seattle's game so far, they uh, they won at San at UC San Diego. They beat Puget Sound, Portland State, Portland, and Pacific Lutheran, and they lost at Washington, seventy seven sixty six. They beat Cal State Fullerton. Uh, they had a win in overtime at North Dakota. That must have been a trip. No. Um, at Oregon State, seventy three fifty eight. Uh, they won over Alcorn, and they lost, uh, as we said today, 84-56 uh, to uh, Utah. Uh, their top player is Cameron Tyson, who is averaging uh, just under 20 points a game. Yeah, 19 and change, yep. And uh, she makes 42% of his shots. Um uh, pretty good on th on three points. He hits 38% of those. Uh, Riley Grigsby is their second high score, 11.6 a game, 11.8. And Alex Shoemaker is 10.3. Um, so um, it's it's interesting. Not a lot of prep time. They'll probably just get a walkthrough. And uh, how do you approach tournaments like that? When you're in the middle of it, you you know you're opening opponent you knew about for a long time, but the second or th and then the third opponent you really didn't get a chance to prepare for more than just uh, you know uh, the day before. Maybe took a quick look at at them in the off season. How do you, how do you get how does a, a coach prepare uh, you know just a few hours for uh, someone they've never uh, really played before? So. Um... I'm certain that multiple coaches stayed and watched Seattle play um, against Utah State, um, did their normal scouting routine. A couple of coaches um, were assigned different aspects of, of, of scouting. Um, I can I can guarantee you that some of them are not attending the luau tonight, um, <laughs> and, and they're going to be up all night preparing the walkthrough to talk about what Seattle does and how they want to play against them. Um, they're going to probably watch tonight some film of their game from today. Uh, and coach is going to help, you know, coach them through the mistakes that were made to prepare to be better tomorrow. Um, and then, you, you know, you really just got to be prepared for the walkthrough. You have to be focused. You know, you have to, you know, understand, you know, the, the makeup of, of the scouting report. And then the bottom line is you got to go play. So you don't have a, a lot of turnaround time to do it. The coaches work their tails off to get them prepared. But in such a short period of time, it's really about the focus and about translating what you hear in walkthrough onto the court. Absolutely. Now, I guess the the um, big change for Iona uh, is having Quinn Zelensky back. Uh, and he's obviously working his way back. Coach Patino said he wasn't uh, – uh, really in shape yet after a month's layoff. How do you see his uh, 
being able to work his way back into the lineup and into the flow of the game? Well, he's not working his way back. He's back. Um, you know, second game, 29 plus minutes, um, leaving everything he has in his tank on the floor, um, being that verbal leader and, and doing what he can do on the court, you know, in, in his current condition, which, by the way, he doesn't look bad. Um, if you ask me, he's running up and down the floor. I think some of the challenges are on the defensive side, you know, getting comfortable moving his feet and, and, and defending to the level that's expected. Um, but it's the plus for Iona to have him back, I can tell you that. He's talented enough that, you know, he'll, in whatever minutes he provides, he'll be able to to add to their team makeup. I think the real challenge for Coach Patino, and I, I know – he knows this better than anyone, is how to get that chemistry back that they had when they were going on that very solid run and playing great, how to get that chemistry back with new players, new makeup, and and, and possibly playing slightly different. Um, some guys are going to have to understand this. It's, a, it's fewer shots now that you have Quinn back, and – Certainly, if they just share the ball and play the way that, that they're capable of playing, he, he'll be a big plus for them. Well, it's going to be interesting to uh, see tomorrow uh, their second game out at the Diamond Head Classic. And we should know it's sponsored by Hawaiian Airlines. And uh, I believe that is a 4.30 start. Let's see if I can check that if they've got it on their listing. And... Uh, my app isn't uh, wanting to quit. Now we got it. Just want to check the time, what they have it down. Yeah, they have it down at 4.30 Eastern time, uh, again, on ESPNU uh, versus Seattle at the Stan Shera Center. Um, it was great to see that the team visited Pearl Harbor uh, uh, yesterday. Um, certainly a uh, uh, one of most solemn sites in America. And uh, for, uh, uh, you know, impacted so many people on the United States and uh, uh, the heroism of the Navy and Marines there. And uh, it was very good to see that they got a chance to uh, visit and pay respects at uh, Pearl Harbor. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, it was nice of uh, the coaches to make sure that, that was part of the itinerary. You know, those are once in a lifetime opportunities for many of these young men. Um, and hopefully it's something that's memorable and they'll never forget it. Absolutely. Well, Kevin Hamilton, uh, Iona Hall of Famer, uh, class of 80. Uh, good to see you tonight. And do uh, you have a final thought for us? Yeah, my final thought is this. Um, for all the Iona fans out there, uh, you're going to have to really be patient. You know, there's – very high expectations, particularly because of some of the very good wins that Iona has had. But just understand that the makeup of this team, it's not last year's team, it's not two years ago, and it's, it's certainly not 40 years ago. So you just got to be patient and, and let Coach and his staff do what they're going to do to really bring this team together at the time that matters, which is when they get into conference play and they get into the conference tournament. Um, I'm very confident that – when, when time is ready and time is right, they'll know who to play, when to play them, how to play them, and they'll be the eye on the gales that you know, everybody is uh, rooting so hard for. Okay, Kevin Hamilton, thank you very much. Uh, always a pleasure to chat with you uh, uh, before and after uh, Iona games, and uh, we'll look forward to watching the gales play tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern time from Honolulu. They'll play the university of seattle so Absolutely. i look forward to it so our best wishes and happy holidays merry christmas happy hanukkah to all of our friends watching today and again thanks for watching